Hi, Kevin Coop here, and this is Space Time with the Content Guy. So, uh, you know, you do what I do for a living, and you end up having conversations you never thought you'd have, conversations that lead you in directions you didn't expect to go. Like, for example, the recent conversation I had on the subject of condoms. Not a topic I expected to talk a lot about, especially at my age. Um, but it all started with a friend of mine, and we were talking, and he was explaining about some work he was doing with this company that makes a condom called Sustain. By the way, first out of the box, great branding name. Uh, if you want to have a condom company, call it Sustain. That's a really good name for it. And one of the things he was telling me is, hey, listen, they do some really interesting stuff, and they're, they're, they talk about being um, ethically sourced, responsibly sourced, environmentally advantageous, uh, that sort of stuff. And I said, well, that's interesting. I mean, I never even thought about condoms in that those terms before. Uh, I can think of the times you would use the word ethical, responsible, and other ways to deal with condoms, but not in terms of the environment. So I, I thought we'd do a little checking. And it was really kind of interesting. One of the things we found, I found out was that, indeed, the sustained condoms, uh, the latex rubber they use, comes from a, a plantation in India uh, where they have banned child labor, they pay everybody a responsible wage, and they give a lot of money back to their local community. That was sort of interesting. It ends up that they use a, a, a kind of rubber, this is fascinating to me, um, that does not have something called nitrosamine. Nitris Let's get my head talking around that. Nitrosamine in it. Nitrosamine is actually a, a carcinogen, and it's in a lot of condoms that are sold in the United States, and, and they don't have it or any detectable amounts in theirs. I thought that was interesting. The company was founded by a guy named Jeffrey Hollander, who's the person who created Seventh Generation. Oh, wow, he's got a little bit of environmental credibility there, right? Even more interesting, he invented the company with his daughter, Mika. Now, really? Because I can imagine being in business with my daughter. I can't imagine the condom business would be the business we would necessarily go into. But it ends up that Mika's in, in contribution is really invaluable because one of the things they're doing with the condoms is they're selling them to women. They're not selling them to men. It's the woman's market they're going after. And the reason is, is because they basically come out and said, hey, here's the deal. There's an enormous number of women who are sexually active between the ages of 16 and 40 who get sexually transmitted diseases because they're not using any kind of birth control. They're not using condoms. And that women ought to be responsible for their own health. This is a reason women should be using. Make sure that during, uh, during sex, the man is using a condom. I said, well, that's interesting. That's, they're going after an entirely different market. And they're taking it from a different point of view. They're not just talking about birth control. So I thought this was all really interesting. And from a branding perspective, isn't that what you want to do with your brand? Is you want to take a product that maybe is familiar to people, but find all sorts of unorthodox ways to approach it and the way you market it. Then it ends up, you know, one of the things that, yeah, I had a conversation with Jeffrey Hollander, and he was nice enough to send me some samples. Well, I have to say my kids were a little bit amused when, you know, dad get, gets condoms in the mail. Uh, a little horrified, but also amused. But one of the interesting things about it was that it enabled us, because we talked about all these issues at the, at the, dinner, uh, the dining room table, we talked about the whole environmental issue, we talked about the carcinogen issue, and then we talked about the whole idea of women's health, it really created the opportunity to have a much broader conversation. And again, I'm thinking to myself, wow, isn't that what a great brand does, right? It creates an environment and a connection with consumers that transcends what other people who are in the same business might be having with the consumer. You come at it with a product that's a little bit different, you market it to a customer that's a little bit different, and you create connections that are a little bit different. Isn't that how to create a transcendent brand? And I thought this was just fascinating to me. You know, again, I, I, you know, I'm not here to do a condom commercial, but in terms of branding, I think this is really, really smart. Anyway, that's what's on my mind this Thursday morning, and as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.